So our next talk is by Carl Eastland, who claims that racket plus ACL2 plus ML equals Dracula. So I'm not sure about his math skills, <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Yeah, maybe the operators are overloaded. Yeah. Uh, take it away, Carl. Thank you. So in this talk, I'll be discussing the design for my new Dracula that I recently put up on a public GitHub repository. It is not the same as the Dracula that some of you may have come to know and love or know and hate or however you feel about it, or come to know and stalk with pitchforks, torches, and wooden stakes, depending how literally you take it. Um, but the new design is made to be more than just a model of ACL2. Um, previously, Dracula has just been a racket simulation of ACL2 that takes programs that ACL2 would normally take in, and it just adds a few of the racket features, uh, syntax highlighting, some big bang programs, and other stuff like that, but we haven't really changed the language. And my goal is to kind of change the language and turn it inside out into less of a racket model of ACL2 and more of an ACL2 model of racket. And to that end, I've added racket macros into the mix so the language is much more extensible and looks like the racket we're familiar with. And in order to get some of the logical capabilities needed to really describe a higher level language, uh, I've added some of the expressiveness of the ML module system. Uh, this is a significant expansion on the modular ACL2 I've previously written, which theoretically got some of the job done but was really clunky to write with. And I'm going to show some examples of how much nicer this Dracula is to write in than any other ACL2 anything I've done before. Um, so here's my example program. Mm -hmm. It's just a simple AST data type. Uh, it has expressions and list of expressions. An expression can be a variable that has a symbol as a name, or it can be an application of an expression to some list of expressions. And we could add lambda, but then the slides will get longer, so we're going to ignore that for now. And this looks like you know, a really short, simple program. And we could certainly write this in modular ACL2 or ACL2. Uh, but it turns out that when you actually write this down in ACL2, including all the logic you need to encapsulate the idea of what an abstract data type is and hide the fact that these things are lists, you don't want to be talking about cars and cutters when you know you have an application, you wind up writing pages and pages of code. Because ACL2 is just not designed with abstraction in mind. They want to take their cars and coders and blast through them real fast knowing exactly what they are. And that's not the kind of proof I like to do. <coughs> so I'm going to take a look at the sort of high level macro expansion of what I've built up to hide all those details from someone who just wants to write this down and get on with writing their interpreter or whatever they're doing with their AST. So the data type macro expands into two things. One deceptively short thing called structs that just says, give me two structures, var with one field and app with two fields. And then this mutually recursive uh, AST predicate for expressions and lists of expressions. And this is just the kind of thing you'd write in beginning student, except I've used match instead of con because I like pattern matching. It's nice and declarative. We'll take a look at what these two things mean to ACL2. Note that we're already one level away from the surface syntax. So first, we'll look at what structs tells the Dracula system. I apologize for that. <coughs> the struct system, now this gets into our module system for abstracting out logical theories from concrete implementations. We have a component and its description. And the description they both say about the same thing. They say declare the structures here and define the structures there. So let's take a look at what those things mean. When we declare a structure, the tilde symbol here just means declare. It means an abstract kind of definition. When we declare a structure, we define all the predicates and constructors and selectors we need, but we don't give the definition for them, no body. And then we just state their relationship to each other. If you construct uh, if you construct a var, it satisfies the var predicate. If you extract the name, you get the right name field. And a var is not an application. And the same thing would happen for application. It's not a var. 
And this is the part that really gets long, especially in a large data type uh, if you're writing it yourself. Because if you write a really large data type with, say, seven or eight variants, and that's what we'll consider really large, you're going to have an n squared number of a is not b, c, d, e, f, or g, followed by b is not, and so on and so forth. <coughs> once, we've got the th once we've got the theory explained that tells us a lot about this except for how it's implemented, we can get on with implementing it. The, imp the implementation is really short. This is the part where if ACL2 had it, it could infer all that other stuff because this tells you exactly what it's doing. But it would also infer some dangerous things you don't want it to know, like it's going to forget. This is a var and just say, oh, this is a cons pair. I know about those, except anything that's not in terms of cons pair. It doesn't talk about it. Um, and this looks like the really low level stuff, except we're still using quasi quote and match and some stuff that ACL2 uh, doesn't really support. They have a really primitive pattern matcher. It turns out without hygienic macros, you cannot write a good pattern matcher. You, it's really hard. You can't, because what a pattern matcher wants to do is let bind temporary variables for each intermediate part of the input that it matches. And if you're working in a hygienic system, you've just captured huge amounts of the namespace, or you've just captured the name you yourself just bound. Not only that, without Racket's extensions to hygiene, I couldn't have duplicated Sam's work on match expanders in my custom match for Dracula, so that um, while I'm not showing how I do that here, the actual data type uh, macro in Dracula also binds a match, ex match expander for each one of the structures, so you can then pattern match on your ASTs. So that's how we separate the implementation and the specification of our data types. The other thing that's often really tricky to deal with in ACL2 is mutual recursion and mutual induction, basically because data types are naturally mutually recursive and functions uh, and theorems about them are thus mutually mm -hmm. inductive. But ACL2 does not natively work with mutual recursion and induction as well as just the normal kind. And it turns out it just takes a few macros to kind of turn the one into the other. And so I have a mutual recursion macro where you just nest the functions you want to write inside the mutual recursion so it knows how to find them syntactically. And it can give you a larger function that just operates on tags and redirects all your calls to expert list huh, to AST huh, with the appropriate tag passed along. And it didn't fit on the slide, but then you just describe expr define expr huh and expr list huh to call this as appropriate. And you can also add a description on this if you want to hide the tagged version. And <coughs> I didn't have a quick example for the slide, but you can also write a mutually inductive theorem. And you just name the name we gave to this AST uh, recursion scheme, knit your two theorems in it, and it will automatically perform the same transformation to turn two theorems into one mutually inductive theorem and everything works much more conveniently. Um, that's my quick demo of the nicest ACL2 thing I've written in. If, oh, I jumped a little too ahead. One thing I wanted to uh, point out is even at this level, boiling things down all the way to the bottom, I'm still programming with <coughs> match and define and lots of other friendly things. It's very nice to be able to have the racket tiered set of languages when working with a completely foreign uh, language and compiler system. And if you ever have to work with some other language and it's just not as friendly, build a rocket shell on top of it. It works great. Now, thank you all.